Chapter 1. Stress and Burnout Are Not the Prices We Must Pay to Succeed Ariana Huffington was raised in Athens, Greece, where people had great reverence for sleep. She shared a one-bedroom apartment with her mother and sister. The ground rule was that everyone must ensure that they maintain a quiet disposition around anyone who is sleeping, not to wake them. Therefore, whenever her sister was in the room sleeping and she wanted to read, she had to go to the kitchen so that the light wouldn't wake her. Huffington's mother was a woman who took sleep seriously. Yet, despite this upbringing, after Huffington left home for school and work, she ended up as someone who deprived herself of sleep due to the pursuit of success. She continued to sleep less for years until she had a breakdown in April 2007 due to sleeplessness, burnout, and fatigue. A lot of things, like exercising, making informed decisions, and meditating, became easier when Ariana Huffington started getting enough sleep. Although we are at a time where we have a lot of information on the importance of sleep, we end up depriving ourselves of sufficient sleep because of technology and the desire to succeed. This summary examines different methods by which we can use sleep to regain control of our out-of-point lives. As a result, you'll learn how to have a newfound respect for sleep, and you may also find yourself beginning a love affair with it. What I've learned is that in today's world, the path of least resistance is the path of sleep. Ariana Huffington Chapter 2. Sleep Deprivation Takes a Toll on Our Mental Abilities In Japanese, Chinese, and Korean languages, death from overwork is called karoshi, gwalasi, and guarosa, respectively. Unfortunately, there's no single word in the English language for the phrase, but nevertheless, people around us are victims of it. Sleep deprivation is a significant issue in our world today. People no longer take time out to sleep well. Most of the time, we are so busy with many things that we value being awake more than being asleep. As a result, the 24 hours we have in the day are under severe attack. Denying your body sufficient sleep can have devastating health effects. Hence, sleep is essential to your health. According to a Gallup poll, 40% of American adults get less than the needed amount of sleep, which is the minimum of seven hours per night. Just like we place a lot of importance on exercise, good food, and wearing a seatbelt, it's also imperative to have good sleeping habits. A lot of people believe that to be productive, they have to sleep less. Despite the number of hours workers put into work, sleep deprivation makes them unproductive at the workplace. This is because most people come to work already exhausted, hence they can't be productive. Sleep has a major impact on our mental and physical health, and it can be linked to most mental health disorders, especially depression and anxiety. Did you know? According to Forbes, in 2011, 32% of people surveyed in the United Kingdom said they had averaged less than seven hours of sleep a night in the previous six months. By 2014, that number had increased to 60%. Chapter 3. The Need to Sleep is Critical to Our Survival 
In recent years, sleep research has dramatically increased, helping us understand the need to get enough sleep. Every day, researchers discover new things about sleep. Although the focus of their studies might vary, they all arrive at the same conclusion. They all believe that our bodies and brains become inactive each time we sleep. The longer we remain awake, the sleepier we get. The longer we sleep, the more likely we wake up. There are four stages of sleep. Stage one is light sleep, a stage where you are sleeping but still at a point of wakefulness. When you're in this state, you can easily wake up and your eyes and muscles will still be moving. Stage two is slightly deeper than the first stage. It's when your eye movements slowly stop and your body temperature decreases. Stage three is a slow wave deep sleep, characterized by the cessation of muscle and eye movements. This is our deepest phase of sleep, and if you're woken up at this stage, you might likely feel dizzy and disoriented. Sleep talking and sleep walking takes place during this stage. The fourth and final phase of sleep is REM sleep. It begins at about an hour and a half into your sleep. It is characterized by rapid eye movement, quicker and shallower breathing, increased blood pressure and heart rate, and faster brain wave frequency, looking like those in our awake brain. At this REM stage, our muscles are paralyzed. Dreaming takes place at this stage, and if you wake up during this time, you are more likely to remember your dreams. The drive to sleep is so strong, it will supersede the drive to eat. Your brain will just go to sleep, despite all of your conscious efforts to keep it at bay. Aaron Hanlon Chapter 4. Sleeping Issues That Stem from Medical Conditions and Their Impacts on Health As sleep is essential for our bodies, so is it for our minds. For instance, there might not be a cure for the common cold yet, but we know sleeplessness increases the tendency of getting one. So it's better to cure a cold before you get it. But if you have it, sleeping is a good remedy. There is an Italian proverb that says, Bed is medicine. The potency of other treatments can increase by enough sleep. For example, research carried out by the University of Pittsburgh in 2012 revealed that sufficient sleep increases antibody levels of people who received hepatitis B vaccine. Conversely, sleeping for less than six hours made the vaccine abortive. Sleep deprivation is detrimental to our immune system and general well being. Researchers from the universities of Louisville and Chicago discovered that sleep deprivation in mice injected with cancer cells made cancer grow faster. In addition, lack of sleep affects how the immune system reacts to cancer, thereby making the disease more aggressive. Sleep also affects our reproductive system. There is a strong connection between sleep deprivation and infertility in men and women as it affects sperm count and hormone production. According to a Danish study in 2013, it was revealed that men who have high levels of sleep deprivation experienced a 25% reduction in sperm count. Lack of sleep is also linked with erectile dysfunction. According to Dr. Lisa Shives, the founder of North Shore Sleep Medicine in Evanston, Illinois, testosterone is produced during the night. There are studies showing not only that a decrease in the total amount of sleep can lower a man's testosterone, but also that REM sleep is important to the production and release of testosterone.
Chapter 5. Sleep disorders are an indication that something is wrong with our health. Most of the time, we are the cause of our sleeplessness. This is because we don't value sleep, and sometimes we do everything not to sleep so that we can attend to other things. These sleep deprivations can lead to sleeping disorders like sleep apnea, insomnia, etc. Sleep apnea. More than 25 million American adults suffer from sleep apnea. These interruptions can prevent you from experiencing REM sleep because sleep apnea occurs many times every night. There are two kinds of sleep apnea. Obstructive sleep apnea. In this type of disorder, people have issues breathing normally because of blockage in the airway. This leads to snoring most times. Central sleep apnea. This occurs when the brain fails to send accurate signals to the muscles that control breathing. This often leads to tiredness, inability to concentrate, and illnesses. Sleep apnea can lead to a high mortality rate and can impair cognitive function and spatial memory. Sleep apnea is connected with serious health issues like depression, heart attacks, and heart failure. Hence, it is advisable to go for a checkup when you notice you have sleep problems. Insomnia. When you constantly find yourself in that situation where you are trying hard to sleep but to no avail, it means you may have insomnia. So you stay awake thinking about all manner of things. A third of adults have a hard time falling asleep and about 10% meet the diagnostic criteria for chronic insomnia. Ariana Huffington. Other sleep disorders. Other common sleep disorders are restless leg syndrome sleep paralysis, and exploding head syndrome. Seek medical advice if you notice you're suffering from any sleeping disorder. You can manage sleep disorders by getting enough sleep and reducing stress. Chapter 6. Your age plays a massive role in the amount of sleep you need. The most common question people ask about sleep is, how much sleep is required per day? In 2015, many peer-reviewed articles were surveyed by researchers from the American Academy of Sleep Medicine and the Sleep Research Society. They determined that a minimum of seven hours of sleep per night for individuals between the age range of 18 to 60 years is good health-wise. Your sleeping pattern changes as you age, hence the National Sleep Foundation did the following breakdown. Ages 0 to 3 months, 14 to 17 hours. Ages 4 to 11 months, 12 to 15 hours. Ages 1 to 2 years, 11 to 14 hours. Ages 3 to 5 years, 10 to 13 hours. Ages 6 to 13 years, 9 to 11 hours. Ages 14 to 17 years, 8 to 10 hours. Ages 18 to 25 years, 7 to 9 hours. Ages 26 to 64 years, 7 to 9 hours. Ages 65 and over, 7 to 8 hours. Sleep is the major activity of the brain during early development. Sleeplessness affects a child's learning, emotional regulation, and can lead to infections, high blood pressure, obesity, and other health problems. In April 2015, researchers in Norway found that children who slept below 10 hours per night had more behavioral and emotional problems as they got older. If babies have an unhealthy sleeping pattern during childhood, that pattern will continue as they grow older. 
Babies need a lot of sleep, but the issue remains how to get them to sleep at night. Choose a sleeping method that you are comfortable with and ensure it fits with the temperament of your child and make it a routine. For example, you can read books to your baby slowly and yawn while reading. Chapter 7. How to get sufficient sleep while on the same bed with your partner. Most times, the decisions people make about sleep are greatly influenced by others. This is very common in marriage, such that our spouses determine when, where, and how we sleep. So, why do most people sleep in the same bed as their spouses? Roger Eckert, the author of At Day's Close, asserted that the custom of sleeping in the same bed was born out of necessity and not intimacy. During the 18th century in Europe, among the lower classes, it was normal for all family members to sleep in the same bed. Nighttime was a time of fear and vulnerability for most people because they had to sleep without light. Having a bedmate made people feel secure due to the presence of imagined and real dangers. There are huge differences between when we sleep alone and when we sleep with others. Many people actually prefer to sleep alone majorly because there is less chance of sleep disturbance. Sleeping in the same bed with somebody else puts you in a position where the person snores, stray legs, and noise can keep you awake all through the night. The fear of not having sex is one of the major reasons couples sleep in the same bed. If a spouse is experiencing sleep deprivation because of the other, it can result in troubles in the relationship. Sleeping in bed with someone who snores has a way of disrupting the quality of your sleep. It's very uncomfortable to sleep beside a person who snores, and trying to stop the person from snoring can be a waste of time. Snoring occurs when air cannot move freely through the nose and mouth while sleeping. You can use earplugs and noise-canceling headphones to block out sounds that might disturb your sleep. If those fail, then you might want to consider sleeping in a different room. Chapter 8. What to do, what not to do. Tools, techniques, and tips for better sleep. From time immemorial, people have had issues with sleep. There are personal reasons why people deprive themselves of sleep depending on their routines and environment, but those reasons can change from time to time. Below are some ways to still improve your sleep life. Reduce the light in your bedroom. If you want to have a good night's sleep, minimize the light in your room. This is because light reduces melatonin production, which helps promote sleep. Hence, before going to sleep, put off the light and transform your bedroom into a convenient state that can lure you to sleep. Blue light affects sleep negatively. It suppresses the production of melatonin, which is very bad for sleep. Hot temperature 60 to 66 degrees Fahrenheit is the best sleeping temperature. 
According to the National Sleep Foundation, when the temperature rises above 75 degrees Fahrenheit or falls below 54 degrees, sleep is affected. Hence, 65 degrees is the recommended sleeping temperature. Your body temperature reduces gradually at night and returns to its normal state as you approach morning. Engaging in regular physical activities helps us sleep better. Watch what you eat and drink if you want to sleep better. Going between caffeine and sugar all day is an obstacle to a healthy sleep diet because we end up tired but wired at night. Chapter 9. Nature's Arsenal. Acupuncture, Herbal Remedies, and Other Sleep Aids. For a long time, acupuncture has been used as a sleeping aid. Emory University evaluated 30 studies on the treatment of insomnia, and the results showed that acupuncture could be up to 93% effective in relieving insomnia. Additionally, auricular acupuncture has been proven to be invaluable in resolving sleeplessness and related conditions. Acupuncture is just as effective a treatment for insomnia as medication. Looking closely into how acupuncture reduces sleeplessness, researchers from the Center for Addiction and Mental Health in Toronto discovered that acupuncture increases melatonin and reduces anxiety. Meditation and sleep work hand in hand. For example, a study carried out at Stanford in 2009 revealed that a six week mindfulness meditation course was beneficial to people who had issues sleeping. It helped them sleep faster in 15 instead of 33 minutes. The molecular geneticist and the French Buddhist monk, Mathieu Ricard said that those who do contemplative retreats in hermitages are far from doing nothing since they are always engaging in training their minds, but there is no noise, no stress to cure, no waste to eliminate, no chaos to reorganize. This means that there is less to repair during sleep and the sleep quality of meditators is deeper. Conclusion. If you're going to reconfigure your sleeping habits, you have to ignore all the suggestions, sleeping aids that telemarketers try to convince you to buy. Ideally, having a good night's sleep shouldn't require you to take medications or put yourself through rigorous routines that impede your rest. Rather, your ability to sleep well begins with how much you value yourself and your health. You need to know that you are more important than what goes on around you, good or bad. Hence, stop tying your identity to external things like achievements, success, job, marriage, family, etc. Instead, let your focus shift 
to you. When you do that, you will begin to value sleep. According to PubMed Central, people who deprive themselves of sleep tend to add more weight than those who get good sleep. Sleep affects our brain, heart, lungs, and other tissues and systems in the body. Hence, lack of sleep affects these body tissues leading to depression, high blood pressure, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and obesity. Sleep allows us to connect to our essence, and in that position, it becomes easier for us to let go of the cares of the world. Currently, many people are using smart technologies like bedside monitors, smartphone apps, smartwatches, bracelets, and headbands to track their sleep. These smart technologies will give you more information on your sleep and instigate you to take steps to improve it. Nighttime is not the only time to get some sleep. Taking a nap during the day is very effective for overall health and can increase productivity. Try this. To have a good night's rest, reduce blue light exposure in the evening. Don't consume caffeine late in the day and set your room temperature to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 degrees Celsius, depending on your preference.